What up, After Buzzers? As you can see, we have a very special guest in the house. Stay tuned with the writer and creator of Sweet Vicious. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. I love this song so much. God, the show makes me want to be such a better person. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I am Ryan Graham. We are here with the Sweet Vicious After Show for Season 1, Episode 7, Heartbreaker. And we are here with the lovely Jen Keaton Robinson, the writer and creator of this amazing show, Sweet Vicious. Thank you for being here, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here, you guys. Because we're excited to have you. And don't let me, let me not forget about my lovely co-host to my left. You want to introduce yourselves, guys? What's up, guys? <laughs> I'm your host, Christine Alexis. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Christine Bean. Hey, guys, I'm Renee Ariel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Renee Ariel. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, Jen, thank you for being here. Happy um, to be here. We, we literally talk about this show so much, obviously. We see it every <laughs> week. Um, we always say each week gets better and better, much like the song says, I want to get better. So we are happy to have you here and to kind of dive into everything that is Sweet Vicious. Um, and whenever we have guests, we do play a game. And I think you've seen it, how we play Sweet Vicious. So into it. Yes. So down. <laughs> Good. I'm Cannot glad. wait. So let's just jump right into a good old game of Sweet or Vicious. So. Yeah. For the viewers at home, if you're new, we play a game when we have guests. It's called Sweet or Vicious. I made these little signs because I'm crafty, not really. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're gorgeous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> one side says sweet and one side says vicious. I'll just say a couple of things, and I want you guys to tell me if you think it's sweet or vicious. So, round one, beer pong. Do you think it is sweet or vicious? Oh, two sweets and one <laughs> vicious. Let's dive in. Okay, why vicious? I just... <laughs> First of all, <laughs> I'm not good at it. <laughs> um, I also think that it is, for girls, it can be used for evil. Oh, on really? College campuses. Oh. Yeah, I think that all of those games that are played in the frat houses, when they get girls to kind of join in on it, it's like a girl, the way a girl can tolerate alcohol and the way mm. a guy can tolerate alcohol are two different things. So I, I do think that they are a little vicious sometimes. Uh, and also, I'm, I'm terrible at it. So, like, mostly it's that I'm terrible at it. Um, and so. why should I have to get a ping pong ball in that, like, tiny solo cup? It's, like, so far away. That's crazy. Um, but also, I do think that drinking games, especially in frat houses and, and college, can be bad and, and are part of the conversation that we're trying to kind of bring awareness to on the show. Yeah. No, it makes sense. And then, well, I'm sweet. <laughs> so, what are, what, I guess, what are the, the uh, counter arguments to that? Because, I don't know, I have fun doing it, but I guess I've never looked at it like, oh, I can be a guy, so I might drink more. Okay. When I was, um, <laughs> with, like, when I used to play with my friends, see, this is so lame of us, but we literally used to play, like, beer pong, where it was just pong, where we'd fill them up with water. Like, it was literally just for the game. Oh, that's yeah. chill. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, 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 that's how I that's played it. That's the way to do it. Other that thing, how... it's dirty. Yeah, it is Like, dirty. Yeah. I... Okay, that ping pong ball fell on the floor, and now you want me to drink it when it fell in my solo cup? That's you want me to get a sore throat? Like that sounds oh, gross. That sounds germy. <laughs> I don't want that in me. So I was like, yeah, like it's much. I like playing with water. I, I didn't think I realized people played with actual beer. I've never played with beer in the right? cup, so that's weird. Okay, that's no, the thing. And then I went to a party, and I was like, yeah, let's play pong. And they were filling up with beer. I'm like, that seems like a waste. And then I was like, oh, that's how you guys play. I thought that was just on TV. So <laughs> well, there's that, Christine. <laughs> Um, I mean, I love beer pong. I'm actually pretty decent at it. Oh, so yeah. I love it for the pro. just for the fun of it, not <laughs> where it leads, which I totally agree with the points that you made. Um, it's so much more fun playing with like Brene or like my girlfriends when mm -hmm. we're clearly you just ever like... played rosé pong? Oh my <gasps> god. That sounds way better. That sounds yeah. way better <laughs> My though. girlfriends and I have played rosé pong. And that it sounds is. like I think amazing. I'm going to have to take yeah. like my yeah. girls' night up a notch and do rosé be, pong. Be classy. <laughs> be classy. I feel like I've been playing this wrong for years. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yes. We have sound effects. Okay, yeah. next one, themed parties. And that can mean whatever you want. Themed, like, like to me, I think like Halloween is a theme, but that's random. So theme parties, sweet or vicious? Sweet. Okay, yeah, so we all think it's sweet. What are your favorite theme parties? No, nope. yeah, you know, spot putting on the spot. My, I don't know. I like Halloween uh, parties. 
See, I I love, um, I, we used to do parties where it was like, um, when I grow up, so we would dress up like what we wanted to be. So like, oh I remember God. someone, oh. I went one year like with a mirror on and I was like, oh, sorry, it's things I wouldn't want to be, which is negative because we were in college. And I was like, war mirror was like, you, I don't want to be you when I grow up. Oh, that's so, that oh my God. so sweet. <laughs> know, You're so cool. witty. You're so cool. cool in college. <laughs> I know, I didn't party in high school. I definitely wasn't cool enough for that. So I don't know. <laughs> what are your guys' favorite themes? Um, I like anything where people have to like really go for it. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I don't like a half ass theme right, right, party right. where it's like you can like kinda wear pajamas and then get away with being anything. Yes. Or like putting like animal ears on and like a negligee and like calling yourself an animal. I'm a cat. I'm a mouse. Yeah, like you gotta go yeah. like we're done. Go all out. Yeah. I want like a balls to the wall theme party. Like you really have to like spend days working on a costume. Yeah. How many weeks did it spend making that costume? Yeah. Oh, a day? I'm not gonna mm, talk not to interested. you. Totally. Like, you know, the, the ultimate theme party is Halloween, so that's that when people true. like really go all Have out. you seen Katy Perry's birthday parties and theme parties that she throws? Uh, no. Every, I'm pretty yeah, sure her she, birthday yeah, is near was, Halloween. And, and she was Hillary Clinton this year, and it was like yeah. insane. She throws oh this God. insane themed party every year. It's awesome. Still waiting for an invite. It's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, this is your public announcement. Yeah. Hi, Katy. Hi, Katy. But they're insane and they're like so it's like she really goes all in just like google katie Katie perry Perry theme party and just get lost in that for several hours (laughs) scrolling scrolling all right okay so um the next one would be playing games with potential lovers is it sweet or vicious like, oh, like, like, like kind playing, of, like when like, you're playing like, games with someone? Right, like kind of like teasing them, playing like hard Ophelia? to get. Yeah, like kind of like Ophelia this week, sweet or vicious. Oh, okay, that's weird, because I'm the only guy, and I was going to say sweet. I think Quit it's adorable. Is that weird? playing games with my heart. Okay. Yeah, that's your boy's so vicious. Said. Why vicious, girls? Because, like, I mean, if you're really interested in someone, you don't want to be strung along. Like, that hard to get bit just gets really old for me mm. really quickly. It just teeters the line of, like, okay, you're really irritating me. Are we going to make out? Or are you going to just exit stage left? I need to know. Oh, don't want to play games, obviously. Yeah. I think it's like a waste of time. Hmm. Like, if you're into me, great. Like, don't take a week to respond to, like, be cool and aloof. Like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't know why (laughs) and when that became the, like, cool thing to do. And, like, where that came. I, like, genuinely, like, where did that come from? But it's like it's so. Tired. Is there never like a line where you think like the chase is fun? Because part of me feels like chasing someone. The chase is fun. Is fun. It's yeah. the games that are like the, okay. the the chase. I think is really fun. But I think it's the like, like you said, waiting a week to text someone back when you want to text them and like all of that, like the minutia of the game. Like is like, like it took you yeah. two minutes to text yeah. me, so I'm gonna take four minutes and then it just keeps going from I'm there. Like, bitch, I know your phone. Yeah, people are now. Like you just Instagram something. I know you have your phone. I know you can text me back. You just like my pic on Instagram. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> no, that exactly. is okay. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, last one. Drinking with your friends when they've gone through a rough breakup. Is it something sweet to do with them or is it a little vicious to do with them? I'm going to do this. Like, same. Rough, I'm going to do the like, same. It's like a double edged sword. Ooh, okay, why? Why so? It's sweet and good until you're like viciously throwing up after. <laughs> totally <laughs> well, been there. Um, no, but seriously, like, it's. I personally, I'm not trying to sound preachy, but there's only so much that you can drown your feelings with alcohol. Mm. Like, it just kind of gets to a point where you're not really, like, helping each other. I feel like a good girlfriend, like, I'll let you drink and get it out, but then I'm going to corral you back to reality and let you know, like, you know, you can move on from this. It's not the end of the world. See, I guess in my mind, I'm like, I think I've had some, and maybe it's because I'm a guy, and so it's hard for some guys to show emotion. And, like, I've had some very nice drunken heart-to-hearts with guys. And so I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, I've drank with friends afterwards, and they've, like, opened up and been like, oh, I get it, dude. Like, let's talk about this. But maybe that's weird. But, no, I don't, I don't know. think that's, that's weird. weird. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Heart to heart. I, think that, I think that the drinking, as long as it leads to the talking mm-hmm. and yeah. the, like, opening up and the catharsis, I think that the drinking is totally fine. I just, as long as it doesn't become a thing where the only thing that's happening right. is yeah. the drinking. I feel you on that. Like, for me, if, like, my friend's going through a hard time, like, I have a bottle of wine, just, like, come yeah. on over. Like, yeah. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Like, that I feel like is good. I mean, it's another thing to be like, I don't want to feel anything I'm feeling right now. Let's go to the bar and get wasted. Like, that's another thing. Yeah. And that's like, well, let's talk first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of going to the bar and getting wasted, I feel like we saw a lot of that this episode. So we saw um, three of our favorite characters, Hair, Sophia, and Jules, kind of go on this drinking um, adventure, I guess. Um, and Jules was not participating at first. Um, and then she kind of leads into that. And we will get to Jules. But um, so Harris, he's dealing with his law journal article not being published. And it's like, you know, he was so proud of it. And then he gets to this moment, he picks up the journal, and it's like, what? And you really see how disappointed he is. And 
he's like trying to figure out how to deal with that and then he ends up publishing it on the internet and I just feel like that's gonna get him in a lot of trouble with the school and I don't know I just I'm curious to see where that leads because I feel like that cannot be good for him because he gets kicked off a and then b this publicity is out there about the school now so this is just gonna snowball like maybe it starts small but it's gotta snowball from there right I don't know thoughts on this sharing this it seemed like the administration was already like quick to shut that down right. initially when Officer Barton brought it up to the dean. So I think you know him putting out this article online now, it's just, like you said, it's adding more publicity to it. So I think that's going to cause the administration to crack down even more. Mm. You're just like putting a light on all, of, all of the things that you're doing. I kind of wish that you know he and Officer Barton would have explored this a bit more and really just... I don't know, just did something else to really have some like concrete proof and not just a theory right. before putting it out there for people to like squash it. That's true. I yeah, no, I, I can I can agree with that for sure. Uh, I just think that they're going to not take this seriously until they're because we saw on Twitter there are people being like, oh yeah, vigilante, okay. Right. But I think yeah. once there are people that will take this more seriously and be like, that is believable, that could happen, whatever. That's when the school is going to be like, we gotta do something about this and probably have like a meeting with Harris. Does like in the research for the show, Jen, did you find schools have stuff like this happen where there will be someone who did maybe do like an article about it or report on it a little bit and then people just kind of brush it to the side? There are a lot of people who are who are kind of taking action on their campuses and writing about what's happening to them and speaking out about what's happening to them. And um, there are definitely campuses that are trying to shut that down and mm. trying to kind of go around that. And, and the support, instead of throwing it behind the survivor, is being thrown behind the student that they are speaking right. out against. So, and I, and, and the universe, and, and they, they back themselves. The universities back themselves a lot. They, you know, they don't want to be looked at as someone that's not helping, but they also aren't helping. Yeah. So it's really a double-edged sword. It's really interesting. And with Harris, you know, there's so much. He's He feels the the reason he put it up on Medium, it goes deeper than just the want of, no, like, the want to know what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. This vigilante in the last episode bashed him in the leg. Right. That's true. Yeah, and, and now he's kicked off the law journal. And he, all of these things are snowballing and they're affecting him negatively. So at this point, he's just like, fuck it. Yeah. I I'm, I'm going after this person. Uh, so we really wanted to make that feel impulsive and make it feel really raw because I think Harris is so much the moral center of the show and mm -hmm. he's so rational. And we do, we wanted to see and kind of explore what it means when he does go off the rails a little bit and where does that take him? Right. And I feel like this episode, we definitely see that because like him drinking like this was like, at least for me, I was like, this feels very like, not like what we've seen of him so far and like you even see him calling Dara later and being like oh I published it online like he's almost like in this braggadocious way about what he's doing wrong and like we kind of talked about it a little bit um, earlier people not dealing with their problems and like we were talking about a different character at the time but um, it felt like Jules, Ophelia and Harris all were in a way not dealing with it and this was him not dealing with it and I'm trying to escape drinking it mm -hmm. away and it's like so it's, it's interesting to see him in this like um more human side of him because sometimes he or a lot of times he's like very perfect and it's like it's it's cool to see him be imperfect and like whoa because like you see that even someone who's so polished can have a moment where it's like oh this is this is tough and I'm dealing with something so I don't I appreciated that um, yeah. So yeah. yeah we wanted him to we wanted him to feel nuanced we wanted him to feel like a real person who's yeah. a young person who's dealing with his shit yeah. trying to figure it Definitely. out and I think that you know especially being a young black man, a young black law student. Yeah. It's like we did a lot of research and we 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 really looked into like what does that mean and and what is it like being a person of color at a you know, it's kind of an Ivy League school, darling, right. it's Ivy ish that we're saying it is, and what does that mean and what is that like? And so I think that there's also a little bit of resentment towards Dara and towards the law review the law journal and, and the way that he's being treated because it's like it's bullshit and he feels like it's bullshit and it's and it's something that he's felt and experienced many times in his life. Yeah. Uh, so there's so much below layers just, yeah, there's so many layers of him that we really wanted to unpack and kind of explore. Oh, that's, ex I'm excited. Like, As a viewer, I really yeah. appreciate that. No, like, you guys gave his character that kind of depth and complexity because it's a story that needs to be told, especially for a person of color. It's, sure. uh, it's it's really cool to see him and especially his relationship with Ophelia because they seem like they would not be friends but in this perfect mix of opposites of tracks they're like 
BFFs. Yeah, they make no yeah. sense at all. The same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so awesome. And then we also see, um, so Ophelia and them have these 40s taped to their hands. So she's drinking her issues away as well because she's running from her boo th- her boot boy thing boo thing <laughs> Evan. so yeah we have we didn't see evan last episode but we saw their romance start to kind of blossom and so we all of a sudden see her completely blowing him off and which is why we played the games or we were asking why would you play games with someone you were interested in and it's just it's weird to see um ophelia be so like i guess um adversarial to love because it's like she doesn't want to open up and she doesn't want to have someone that close she's like it's like having worms in my stomach <laughs> and she was like those are butterflies <laughs> and I just love I love that line that was oh gosh I, your brain is like, yeah. and you, so Jen wrote this episode everyone and she's written I, I, how many you wrote five episodes no I wrote so? four. four I wrote okay. one two seven and ten. Oh, oh, so okay so mm-hmm. we will get one more of these fantastic well all of the writing's fantastic but one more specifically from Jen in episode ten but that line was really funny and I just appreciate that thank you that. So many good one-liners. Yeah. Oh my yeah, god, so my Ophelia's lines They're all the time awesome. kill me. Like, I like, can't. It just never ends, and it's so good. Like, so I need good. the puns and the lines. But yeah, like so. I guess like um, exploring that with Ophelia. What was what were, um, do you think was the intent behind her doing this with Evan, or what layers are we unpacking with this now? With Ophelia and Evan. Mm-hmm. So you know, a huge thing for us, and and a huge thing for Ophelia is. She doesn't let people get close to her mm-hmm. because she's afraid that they're not going to like her once they know her. And so she shuts them down before they can shut her down. And she mm-hmm. shuts them out before they can shut her out because she's very guarded. And you saw in episode four her relationship with her mom. And yeah. she's got a lot of baggage. She's got a lot of issues. And for as strong and as independent as she is, she's broken. And yeah. I don't say broken in a negative way because I think that you can be very strong and also very broken. And and the pieces of her that are broken, she are in that kind of love box. Yeah. I think that that's an, an area and an avenue that she's chosen not to really explore because she's too afraid of getting her heart broken. Right. Um, and there's a scene in the next episode where she gets her heart broken in a way that I think she never expected and the audience will probably mm-hmm. not see coming oh, wow. um as well so you know so you know we really wanted to unpack like what does it mean for someone who's been independent because they're afraid to open up to someone and who's who's called themselves an outsider but that's because she's never put herself on the inside because she's afraid to what does that mean when she opens herself up to love with evan to a friendship yeah. with jules to all of these new things and these new experiences um, and with Evan, we love Stephen Friedrich. I just mm-hmm. like I love him yeah. so deeply. Um, so it was a no brainer. He, fun fact, he tested for Harris. What? Yep. That would have been interesting. He tested wow. for Harris. Their chemistry was off the charts, bonkers. Because he read with Taylor. Mm-hmm. They were incredible together. And but when we heard Brandon, it was just like it was Brandon. It was Brandon all the way. We love him. Yeah. He was just yeah. so he was so the character, and he was everything I wanted. But I just, we loved Steven. And ever, all the writers, producers, we loved him so much. So Evan was written for Steven. So oh. no, Evan in the pilot, like, we knew he was going to come back. Like, that was an arc. It wasn't yeah. an accident. It was, we knew what we wanted. And Steven is, he's so incredible. And we hope that he doesn't book some, like, huge series regular role on a network show and leaves our, leaves no, yeah, no. <laughs> um, um, But we're, we love exploring the Ophelia Evan relationship because it's, it's also so different from Jules and Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a lot of fans have asked about Ophelia having a female love interest. Yeah, we were curious about that too because like the fir- one of the first lines was like, oh, is it a guy? Or- I believe it was Harris who kind of mentioned that she he like... He says what kind of friend? Yeah, yeah. And we were, I think we all were like, wait a minute, like, what does that <laughs> I mean? I can see that for Ophelia. Yeah, like she yeah seems, she's she kind of like very, yeah. hinted at it like in the the last scene with her and Evan, she's like, well, you know, she can come too. And I was like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Me. Love is love for Ophelia. Oh, yeah. but, of course. You know, something, and if we get a second season, I would love to do a love triangle between Ophelia, Evan, Ooh. and a female. Oh my God. <laughs> can we vote on that? Oh my yes. God. Yes. Like, yes. That's, that's sweet. If I had that, it's sweet, <laughs> sweet. Oh, no, that's cool. That's cool to, like, see that that was a very intentional arc for Evan and, like, to have that be, because I didn't even, I'd like, I noticed him in episode the first episode, but I was just like, "Oh, this is just some guy." Like I didn't it's a realize. Testament to Steven. He's wow, awesome. that's He's so, so cool. yeah. I love that you guys brought him back. I felt I I, I loved that whole thing because you really in in like typical shows that I've seen that character would have just been gone, just but now guy. he has like such a good storyline in it, and yeah. it makes it so much more 
interesting that he was in that first episode that we did that we were introduced to him, uh, to him mm-hmm. in such like a whatever way like it's like oh this guy he's gonna be gone and he's not and now he's like Ophelia has has it bad well, and I also love that he doesn't take her crap like he's like yeah. I want you to come back sober and tell me what you want like whoa because I, I feel like it's so easy to get caught up in the like dancing around oh I like you do you like me and and not just saying it and I do appreciate that he kind of calls her out on yeah that. he's based on my actual boyfriend oh my really boyfriend. really <laughs> oh my God. that's awesome that's awesome yeah. Aw, well, that's fun. So um, another relationship that we get to see is Jules and Ophelia and how they um, their relationship is close. I feel like she is someone that Ophelia opens up to. Like, that is the one, like, relationship, which I, I don't know why I instantly feel weird saying that because it's not weird. You do have relationships with friends. Um, but she's a relationship that it just works, and I feel like their friendship is so beautiful. You see that she's so much more perceptive than some of Jules' other friends, and, like, when something's going on, she's there to stop her and be like, hey, like, come on, like, something's wrong with you. Let's talk this out, and I I appreciate that. I don't know, do you guys' thoughts on Ophelia and Jules' is like, I love friendship? them. Yeah. Their I friendship is awesome. Them. Yeah, we, I, I loved seeing Ophelia be like, whoa, 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 like, are you okay? Like, maybe you shouldn't drink, and I, and I, I loved that, and I felt their, their friendship is so sweet, and that moment that Ophelia says, like, I don't know if I'm your best friend yet, but you're sure as hell are mine, and I yeah. thought that was so, so sweet. Was that, and that was intentional to him imagining that that she's the one person. Yeah, that, that's her anchor. And mm-hmm. the whole the whole kind of, you know, the whole show is about two girls that find a home in each other. Yeah. Two very unlikely friends that find each other and realize that, you know, this this thing that they felt, this trauma that they felt to find them before, that it doesn't and mm-hmm. that that this other person sees that in them. Yeah. And they haven't had that. Neither of them have had that. It's beautiful to see that happen. And like like you're saying, they are each other's anchor and they literally live together now. So um, Jules, this episode, really, like, and this is a testament to um, Eliza Bennett, like, be, like just amazing with yeah. her talent. Like, yeah. those scenes tonight, um, we'll just get right in. There was a lot that went on with Jules. We get a full flashback of what happens. Um, and you see Jules kind of, going through two different st- types of grieving. I, I, this is what I noticed. It was like, you saw the first round of grieving was when she kind of stayed in bed for weeks because of the attack or the assault. Um, and then you see her now where she's still grieving, but in a different way, she's going off the rails and drinking. And you also get to see how her friendships are different at those times because Kennedy was not very perceptive and kind of was just like, oh, you want to go to the bar? And Jules is in bed and has been in bed for weeks, and she's just like, no, I'm okay. And then Kennedy goes off. But Ophelia, like, stops Jules from doing... Like, she almost attacks Nate in the bar when she sees him. And <laughs> yeah. it's just like, whoa. Like, you you can just see how different Jules is, but at the same time, how vulnerable she still is about the same subject. Right? Yeah. Is, is that just me? I don't no, know. no, no, no. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Dead, that's <laughs> dead. Yeah. 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 For sure. Oh, I love just seeing that juxtaposition of what happened. Um, and another cool juxtaposition that happened. Sorry, if I'm talking No, about, no, no, go in. for it. Um, love it. I loved hearing um, that rendition of Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Like, in like, because you see Jules get up after um, Nate attacks her and um, and she is like distraught and he's sleeping so peacefully. Like, to him, it meant nothing. Like, it was just like, oh. And he's just asleep and she's like, you see that she is just like falling apart. And then that song, which is about being light and fun, but in such a dark mood, I feel like it was the perfect mm-hmm. blend of thank like you. imagery and like it was perfect. Like that thank was you. such a such a great selection. Yeah, so, thank you. Uh, we were I very lucky that. to get that song. We were it's, it's the only song we wanted to use, and we were kind of on pins and needles waiting to see if it yeah. would clear because it's a very big song. And then and when we got it, it's just it. I really think that it ties the moment together mm-hmm. and speaks to you know kind of the larger issue of like these girls just want to have fun yeah. and they're yeah. not asking for this and going to a party and drinking with your friends and even lying down in your friend's bed does not invite what happened to Jules oh, and nor no. it should. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I got really yeah. upset just thinking about that because she was just like, hey, can I lie in your bed? And for him to, I'm sorry. It was I, disgusting. Oh, yeah. I'm so like she was angry. sleeping. Like it, it just, uh. What what I loved so I mean many things I loved in this episode, but seeing their friendship before this, like mm-hmm. Nate yeah. and Jules having a friendship, like that we saw nothing of so far this season. And seeing that, I mean, really, oh my gosh, this this episode is very powerful. I love that there were, there are moments where like we're all kind of like almost tearing up, like trying to hold it together, and then the next moment going back and forth the next moment you're laughing because they're all like out together and, and Jules is acting silly and like this episode like breaks your heart then makes you laugh then breaks your heart and makes you laugh and it was so beautifully done thank you so much yeah. and and the, the dynamics like oh my gosh it's just it's very 
it, it just feels so real. Which, like, like the relationships feel so real. And, and I feel like it's such an honest way of just, like, telling the story. And every episode, I just am more, like, like blown away. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was important to us to tell this story right and to tell the whole story. And, yeah. you know, this is not any one story that we read or from anyone we talked to. This is fiction. It is 100% fiction, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah unfortunately Because so. what's happening in Nate's room and what's happening, you know, in that Title IX office, that's happening. That's something that is very real to a lot of people. And my hope is that not only can survivors feel less alone, but that they can share this and be able to kind of say something without having to say anything. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, you know, people at schools will watch this. Hopefully people entering college will watch this. Hopefully yeah. parents will watch this. I think that you know, especially this episode, we really wanted it to feel, without it feeling like medicine or without us beating you over the head with the message, we wanted it to feel like you were learning something and yeah. that you were yeah. a part of the movement and, and could understand it a little better so that you kind of understood what all these people are fighting for. Right. Yeah. It was, there are definitely, like, teaching moments in there where, you know, you have to face the reality of, like, what really happens. And I thought the scene where, you know, Jules went and got a rape kit done and how compassionate that nurse was to her. I felt like I wanted that so much from the Title IX counselor and you just, Ugh, just didn't yeah. get it. It just fell so flat in that scene and I was so heartbroken for her. I mean, the slut shaming, the victim shaming that she received was completely uncalled for. And like you said, it's so real and so many people can relate to that and it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. I feel like that scene when, it, just the words when she was just like, I'm, I just wanna stop you. Is this about guilt? And it's just like, I feel like Words are very important, and I feel like the counselor almost twisted everything Jules was saying to make her convince herself that, like, oh, maybe I did do that. And I feel like that happens so often to victims uh, or, or, or survivors um, of sexual assault. It's like somehow someone twisted what happened in their head to make them feel like, oh, this is my fault. And yeah, like it was that. messed up. Like yeah. she's like, "Are you sure it's not regret?" And I'm like, "Obviously, she like well, yeah, regrets like, what happened. Like, why do you have to make her like just beat that down her throat? Like she didn't want this to happen. Why are you focusing on that and not trying to understand what happened and how she feels? Like it was so frustrating to watch that. And it's it's the it's misguided. Like <laughs> everything that's happening is so misguided because there are so many people in positions of power that have no business being in those positions. So they. I don't even think they understand the gravity of how they're treating survivors mm -hmm. sometimes. Like I I do I think, you know, I think that as we as this epidemic becomes more more mainstream, yeah. It's the worst way to say it, yeah. but people yeah, are aware yeah of people it. are aware of it. Um I think that hopefully people more and more realize that like, oh, this isn't okay, but I do think that there's some people that just don't like. There's just no education. Like, there's not a lot of no, education. Yeah, no. and there's no and empathy that's why, there. Yeah, like, try and this, understand. And this uh, show like sheds light on uh, because people don't really. Get, I feel like when they think about sexual assault, it's very black and white a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that this this show goes into like, oh, if it was your best friend's boyfriend at a party when you, it's it's not the typical attack that you may see on like Law and Order SVU or right. so and so. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this, especially this episode, you see what happened, and then all of the after effects of that, what happens right after, like that's a story that n I haven't seen any other show no. tell. And I feel like that oh, like, is oh great Oh my that god, the scene when Jules is walking down the halls of the sorority house and Kennedy's like, Jules, is that you? Like to have to face your best friend after something like that happens, period, let alone that it happened because of her boyfriend, like I cannot even imagine what goes through your mind. Cause like that is somebody that you want to reach out to but you instantly know I can't tell you that because there are, there are layers to this this crime that are just so hard and like I just like to anyone that that happens to like like thoughts prayers good vibes all like it's just I don't even know if that's that's not enough like it just it is an experience that I have never had and like and I just survivors are so strong like just to think about it's so strong and the the best thing that you know you can do for the community and for the survivor community is let them know that they're not alone and that you believe them and i think that that was a big thing for tonight's episode we wanted to show you know jules does have ophelia who does believe her but there are so many that and the nurse who did believe her mm -hmm. but there were so many that did not and so that when you hear that enough times like of course you're not going to tell anyone else of course you're not going to like you're going to you're going to feel 
the worth that other people are putting on you because you're so confused and you're so you're, you're ripped apart. Yeah. No, up is down. So I think that, you know, to anyone that has dealt with this, you know, everyone on this show is with you and we believe you. Yeah. And to friends of people that have dealt with this, like, just be there for your friend and believe them and support them. Because I think that that's the biggest thing that survivors need is support. Yeah. There were a couple of lines that like stood out to me during like the, the flashbacks. Um, well, one was just a scene when Jules was typing. Um, she couldn't type the word rape, and I like in your research, did you find that that was like common for people to like I don't want to say deny, but for lack of a better term, deny what happened. I don't know that it was common in the research, but it felt to me it felt right for Jules. Mm -hmm. It felt right when I was sitting thinking about the character and kind of in her skin as I was writing this. There was something about it that felt to me that if she types that word, that makes it true, mm -hmm. and she still isn't at the place where she can accept it. Right. Um, and what you kind of unpack and see through this episode is that she's actually, even now, still not at a place where she can accept it, because the violence and the vigilante activity is all her channeling the energy of her trauma that she's like not release. dealing with mm -hmm. into yeah. the vigilante instead of into getting better and into talking and into actually going to support group and doing something about it. Right. Um, so I think, you know, we kind of are unpacking jewels and showing that, and I want to get better was the perfect song. Yeah. It's like, she's, yeah. she does want to get better, but she's, she's I mean. doing it in the wrong ways. And, you know, she's, the vigilante activity can't be her therapy and that's all she has right now. And Ophelia is starting to realize that. Yeah. Like I, that, just all of that was like. I don't know, it was heartbreaking to hear, to just know that it's hard, I mean, because I feel like there's so many things that people go through that are hard to get over, but something like this that makes you so vulnerable, like, I feel like it's one of those things that, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm empathizing, it would be something that, like, you always learn to get better, but it's like... Every day you have to wake up and you right. have to choose to survive. Right. Like every single day of your whole life, and you didn't, then the inciting kind of incident and what started this, that wasn't your choice. Right. And you have to... You still have to get up, and you still have to choose to survive. And I, it's what these people are doing and how strong they are and their bravery. It is, I am speechless mm -hmm. every day seeing the survivors that reach out on Twitter and their messages and seeing that the show is helping means oh. everything. Um, but it's, it's unspeakable yeah. what is happening on campuses. And even worse, the fact that we're still having to fight at such a base level for human rights. Yeah. What can we do, like, um, I guess, as, like, viewers of the show, like, um, allies um, for people who've been through this, what would you, like, um, advise or, or suggest for us to do to help people through this? I mean, being there, yeah. or, or, or is there activism we can do? Of or? course, get involved. Yeah, yeah. There's so many, there's so many amazing organizations. Rain is so awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you or anyone you know have been you know affected by sexual assault they have a hotline they have a chat line it is wonderful and and making that available and showing people that, that is available is awesome it's on us which is yeah. uh vice president biden's initiative and campaign i actually just went to the white house and spoke wow for oh it's on us but they are doing amazing things yeah. and their their whole campaign is around that it is on us it is not on the survivor mm -hmm. It is not on, it is not a women's issue, it's not a men's issue, it is on everyone. Yes. Yes. And bystanders are just as guilty yes. as oh. the person yeah. that is committing totally. the act. And if you see something, you gotta say something. Um, and then End Rape on Campus, which is uh, an organization that is was started by uh, two of the girls that made uh, the Hunting Ground documentary. Yeah, yeah. it's a great documentary. Awesome, awesome, awesome place for resources. They actually live tweeted the episode tonight, and right <laughs> now, a really easy way to be an activist and to get involved. They're doing a campaign um, for the new Secretary of Education, mm -hmm. and it's hashtag Dear Betsy, mm -hmm. um, B-E-T-S-Y, and it's just telling her why Title IX is important and why we need her to be an advocate for sexual assault survivors in our schools. I, I feel like yes. education is, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, I was just agreeing. Like, yeah, yeah. it is really important. That's awesome. No, yeah. I, and it, I feel like the education goes both ways. Like, I feel like a lot of times guys don't think it's their problem and they don't think that it happens to guys which it does and I think the episode the episode even showed a guy in the support group which was awesome but it's one of those things where it's like wow, yeah. 
everyone needs to, to learn what consent means and it doesn't matter if someone like goes to your room no means no in any way it doesn't matter if it's your best friend it doesn't matter if it's your girlfriend boyfriend if you've had sex 80 times before it does not matter no, no. always means no um, yes means yes right exactly like <laughs> yeah. that, and that's the only thing yeah affirmative yes. consent <laughs> is dope <laughs> no. well, well and it, it's just it's Survivors, we are with you, um, know that, and it's cool to see Jules, like, I don't know if cool is the right word, but there was a, a glimpse where we saw a moment with Jules and Tyler where you see that there's, like, this glimmering, like, light that, you know, that is still there and that she will be able to love again, because like, the scene that they had was so precious. I just love how understanding he is, and I love that he, but here's another thing, I know, I, I need to give <laughs> Kennedy more credit, I know, but it's, like, Tyler and her, like, they were dating for... A, m- a little like a, yeah, a month. couple months, yeah. And, like, he knows something's right. really up with her. He knows that it's not just, like, oh, she was having a bad ear, oh, she's not into him. But then, like, the fact that over and over again, like, I kept thinking Kennedy would get it. Yeah. Like, on the couch, when Kennedy's like, when you're ready to tell me, tell me. And then <laughs> she tells her, and I get that it must be very overwhelming. She has a lot going on. She just heard that her best friend cheated on her with her boyfriend, then her best friend comes, and she's like, maybe she's lying. But, like, the fact that she didn't immediately think, like, why would my best friend lie. lie about this and didn't support her off the bat like that? Because even we saw it in the flashbacks that, that um, Jules was not acting herself after that party. Right. So if they got the timeline right, I mean, I feel like as a best friend, I would be like, oh, wait a second, that like weeks after that, she wasn't getting out of bed. But then again, it does happen. Like there are people that like don't get it, that aren't as perceptive, that don't. Under, that are, don't see, I guess, see that hurt, see what they're right. going through. But I love that Tyler does. Like, I love that he knows something is going on with her. And he's, like, waiting. He's, like, I'll wait for you. Oh, I like Because he God. said it without saying it. He goes, yeah. maybe when we figure our stuff out. I'm, like, that's yeah. your heart. Yeah, <laughs> Nick Fink, Nick uh, Fink killed, Nick kills Fink. you. He just kills you. He's, <laughs> like, heart throbbing. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, and I feel like, and that's just a true statement in life. I do feel like people, in general, need to figure their own stuff out and learn and not just I mean obviously serious issues but like even like minor things like I feel like it's very important to know yourself and then be in a relationship because I don't I feel like you can't truly be in a relationship without like you know knowing who you are I'm not, I think that's yeah. me I was really proud of Jules though when she met Tyler and like gave him a chance oh, considering yeah. everything that yeah. she's been through and that we know about her character and what she like harbors inside for her to you know open up to him and let him in her space I thought was really brave of her mm-hmm. and just how far they got, like I, I mean, it sucks that they're over for right now. Yeah. But I don't, I don't necessarily like blame her for how she went about things and yeah. the, just the timeline of her actions because she's just like unraveling at that point. And yeah. I can understand why she needed to take some time for herself, especially considering where she's at right now. Right. So I, I understand it. Um, I obviously do hope they work it out though, and it seems like. Tyler can be someone who she can like lean on and yeah, for sure. be there for her in the ways that yeah. unfortunately. Kennedy was not, is not, and maybe yeah. will not be, but um, I guess that remains to be seen. It was also important to us to have guys on the show that were wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. We Just wa- genuinely you know, wonderful. Yeah, yeah like Tyler <laughs> and Evan so are sweet. great. And even Miles, who is Nate's best friend, who, you, who kind of came back, he was in episode two, he comes mm-hmm. back in this episode, we really wanted to unpack what does it mean to be the best friend of Nate? And what is that journey? And we wanted to make it feel real and we wanted to like is is he part of the problem Mm -hmm. and he and will he realize that and what does that mean once he does and what does he do with that and what does that guilt feel like right um and we wanted yeah we, we really wanted to make sure that that the men on the show felt like real people and even nate we wanted to make sure that he wasn't just Kind of a mustache twirly yeah. villain. We, yeah. We mentioned that we were saying that like if we didn't know what we knew about Nate, we'd be like, Nate's a nice guy. We, yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's so true. Like, and, and you that, unfortunately, sometimes those can be the guys that this that commit these acts be, because you trust them because they are your friends. Yeah, they were friends. They they were, they were cool besties, with each other. Almost. She was on. A, they were doing the piggyback. Like it was. It was so. That's crazy. I mean, this and, was this was her friend. And not to defend Nate, because I'm not. What he did was incredibly heinous. But in his mind, like I'm sure he legitimately was like, no, we're friends. So I don't like. I mean, which is unfortunate. But I can imagine how he could twist that. In his yeah, mind. and in his mind, I I think there's a little bit of, you know she's just upset because she's Kennedy's best friend. Right. Not because she doesn't want to do it. And so he kind of 
heard and felt what he wanted to hear and feel in that moment. I'd have to agree with that. Yeah, because yeah, I couldn't give him the benefit of the doubt watching that scene at all. No, and it's but it's that's that's also part of the problem. It's like like his whole life, someone said, you know, take what you want, be a man. Yeah. Like you're the man. Like you're Nate Griffin. Like if you want it, it's yours. And that manifests itself in ugly ways. And I mm. think that that's part of you know the education that we wanted to kind of bring about with this episode and the show and, yeah. and kind of bring light to. No, I mean, wow. it, it's the characters are insanely depth or deep and like it's it's awesome to see them. And and we are almost out of time, so we're gonna do a little bit of quick predictions. Like one of the big cliffhangers, <laughs> speaking of like, like cause Tyler so Your After Buzz TV predictions. Um, in the end, we see that Tyler like sees this Photoshop <laughs> picture and it's like, uh oh. So Tyler has oh figured out God. that I call his that brother one. or stepbrother is like no longer, well not necessarily no longer with us, but something's up. So um, what do you guys think, quick predictions for what's gonna happen? With that? Or in general, that's where I, okay, I can start, because I think. Oh, gosh. So you I'll go, start you go, So you we go. know go that, uh, we know that Tyler reports it, and I feel like he's going to do this, this case to try to find his missing brother, but in that happening, he's going to find that he's dead, and then the vigilante article's going to, like, explode with that, he's going to put two and two together, because I don't think Tyler's dumb, and he's going to be like, what? <laughs> that's <good>. Perfect timing. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what's going to happen. That's oh what I think. Oh, my God. <laughs> Predictions, Christine? Um, I predict the same thing. I mean, I, I when we were watching it together, I was like, wait, why did they show that scene with mm. Tyler talking to his mom about Carter being missing? I, I have a feeling that that's just going to blow up. Like, maybe right as Jules is starting to pick herself back up again, Tyler's just going to come crumbling down with the realization of what's happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just going to blow up somehow. Like, I don't see a world where they're both okay mm. when this is not just put out there like they have to discuss the elephant in the room whenever that comes out um yeah. which sucks i want them to be together but i i don't know i predict that that's not gonna end well yeah i think that he i agree with you he's gonna piece to, together that like maybe his brother is dead and perhaps he was well stepbrother and perhaps he was killed by this vigilante because i think he's gonna get really into the articles and but i think he's going to figure that out before he figures out who the vigilantes are. Mm. Maybe Harris will figure out this vigilante. Oh, like Harris some of the knows. clips I was like Harris knows. <laughs> I mean he knows, I mean, but he needs to like, okay, caught ya, I know. Yeah. Like, I know. we need that Jules. moment. I still feel like he's know. gonna join the team. Like he's gonna figure it out and then he's gonna protect them. Cause I think he's gonna be like, mm. now especially now, now that he's not with the law journal, like he's like, Yeah, I'll be a part of it. Like you remember Kim Possible how they had the Wade? I think he'll see he's totally gonna be their Wade. <laughs> he's gonna be their Wade. He's gonna hack into phones or like such Jewel or Affiliate. But I'm just saying I think That's he's funny. gonna And I'm Kim Possible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she came in a few weeks ago dressed just like Kim Possible. So she had no idea. Eliza and Nick here. Amazing. Like my whole fit was just. Kim I was Possible. like, did you go for like the Kim Possible look? She's like, what are you talking? And then she's like, oh my gosh, I'm dressed just yeah. like her. Just, yeah, just no. Jen, any predictions that you can or, or spoilers or anything? I don't. Um, <laughs> drop a spoil. Oh no, little crumbs. Little, little crumbs. <laughs> Um, I can tell you, you're not going to want to miss the end of episode eight or the end of episode nine. Oh, oh my god! Um, I can tell you that some of what you said is correct. <gasps> but which ones? And some of what you said is dead ass wrong. Oh, god. <laughs> no. oh damn! So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, we'll we, see. every episode from here on out is like, it's just more explosive than the next. Um, oh then the gosh. next and we are I'm so excited like I'm so excited to live tweet with everyone and kind of be on the internet and watch it unfold because yeah. knowing what's coming I'm just like yes, yes. <laughs> and we're so excited to be a part of it yes. like, yes. yeah, yeah, thank you guys thank you, we, no. we talk thank you guys it. for doing this they, no we love it oh we my god yeah. we love talking about the show every week like not kidding like this is the <laughs> highway <laughs> like, every week after the show oh my like, gosh like it's hard waiting for it the really next is. week. Yeah. I love this show. Whoever has not, like, tell a friend because yes, you see yes, one please, episode. Please tell a friend. It's tell so a friend. Good. Tell a friend. Binge it. Yeah. At least yes. up till now. We wish we could binge the whole season right now, but unfortunately, we gotta wait a few weeks. We do, and like, obviously, you don't want to miss any of the upcoming episodes. We just found out they're gonna be like crazier than ever. Oh, so yeah. definitely stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for being with us today, Jen. Ah, oh, thank you for being thank here. Thank you guys for having yeah, me. You're awesome. 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 Where can we find you on Twitter, the social media? Uh, Twitter and Instagram, both at Jen Caton, J E N N K A Y T I N. Awesome. All right, and you can got you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Christine Bean. 
Hey guys, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Renee Ariel. Awesome. I'm Ryan Graham. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryan with two ins Graham. Make sure to follow AfterBuzz TV on social media, so the Instagram, the Twitter, all of the above. Like and share our video. Tell a friend about Sweet Vicious. It is insanely awesome, and we will see you next week. Thanks for having us. Bye. 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 From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.